Targeted therapy is now firmly entrenched in the management of advanced uh, non-small cell. Approximately 25% of our patients, generally with non-squamous histology, have an actionable molecular uh, marker. Uh, certainly, EGFR TKI has now become standard uh, treatment based on eight and counting phase three trials compared to uh, chemotherapy up front, the mutation positive uh, group. And we've seen the emergence of crisotinib and the recent approval of seritinib for uh, patients whose uh, tumors harbor the uh, alk fusion uh, uh, molecule. So, an emerging issue. A big focus now is acquired resistance. Certainly, it's coming to the forefront uh, as we look at second-generation inhibitors. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, ALK, uh, seritinib, uh, electinib, the uh, Ariad compound, and of course, in the case of uh, EGFR uh, uh, inhibitors, uh, the development of Clovis and uh, AZ compounds, uh, as well as the potential role of afatinib and tuximab in combination. So, Ross, if you could just uh, briefly review uh, where the field is in terms of uh, EGFR inhibition. So, um, we, we know that EGFR mutant patients, when they're put on a first generation inhibitor, a lotinib or in other parts of the world, gefitinib, um, will develop acquired resistance. And we know from a series of elegant rebiopsy studies, um, the initial ones from Mass General, but also from Sloan Kettering, um, that we can understand some of the biology of that acquired resistance. The, the most common mechanism, 50 to 60 percent of cases, is you get a second mutation in the EGFR in cis with the original activating mutation called T790M. And that alters the binding kinetics with these drugs, and essentially they don't work as well. Now, the other 40 odd percent, there are a range of different mechanisms, but let's focus on T790M because we really understand that biology. And while there were second generation inhibitors, afatinib and dacomitinib, which have which bind more tightly, they're, they're irreversible inhibitors, they bind covalently, they've worked in the lab, but we couldn't seem to get high enough exposures in a tolerable manner to work actually in patients. It's actually the third generation inhibitors, the Clovis CO1686 and AstraZeneca's AZD9291 drugs, which are starting to show very exciting activity. And we're seeing response rates in the order of about 60% in that T790M positive population. And these are folks who have responded and then have had disease progression yep. on the original uh, TKI. So, so that's the, really remarkable. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really seen data on the duration of response. That's going to be shown at ASCO 2014. Um, but the hope is that, you know, maybe we're going to be able to, to reboot the system with these things and essentially get an oncogene addicted disease which is starting to emerge from, contr out of, from, from control back under control. Is T790 mutation necessary to see responses with these new compounds? Uh, don't we see uh, responses as well in those who are T790 negative? Well, so that is an emerging field. So it all depends on how you define T790M negative. So T790M negative could mean you're genuinely driven by some other mechanism, or it could be that you have T790M, but your testing mechanism failed to detect it, or your biopsy missed that part of the tumor that was expressing T790M. So yes, some initial, particularly with the AstraZeneca compound, did appear to show some responses in T790M negative, but there's a big work going on as to trying to really define, you know, who that population is. And it's my impression, based on the little data that have emerged, uh, first at World Lung and then at the uh, Santa Monica Targeted Therapies meeting, that these compounds are relatively non-toxic. That we don't see the typical uh, rash or diarrhea that are associated with the uh, first line, EGFR TKIs. So where the third generation inhibitors differ from the second generation inhibitors is that their activity against the, uh, the main activating forms and T790M occurs at IC50s far lower than that inhibit the wild type form. The second generation inhibitors had them the other way around, which is why you could never inhibit T790M without getting skin and gut toxicity. Whereas certainly for both of these, we're seeing very little in the way of skin and gut toxicity. We are seeing novel side effects. So hyperglycemia is emerging as a side effect associated with uh, the <coughs> CO1686. Again, that's the Clovis compound. That's the Clovis compound. Mm -hmm. um, the exact mechanism is unclear. It may not be a direct effect of the molecule. It may be a metabolite, for example. So we have to put on uh, internal medicine hats and relearn how to manage diabetes. Well, it's a ma it's a manageable <laughs> condition. I mean, so it, you know, it's 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 it successfully be dose limiting or yeah. protocol limiting. Yeah, you can find a significant proportion of the population who are diabetic and they, they don't feel they have no quality of life. Are there special concerns in the studies in diabetics uh, in terms of eligibility, or that's not an exclusion? They haven't. I mean, in fact, they're they're actually the best because they have really well controlled blood blood sugars. So, so they, um, and they know how to deal with yeah. the. Uh, 
uh, toxicity. But we're still talking only about 20% of the patients uh, have the hyperglycemia. Well, so that's the today. data. That's that's the data that's been reported. But obviously, this is an emerging data right. set. Right. Right. It's still very early, although it looks quite exciting. Right. And uh, certainly, uh, studies are um, uh, about to be commenced with uh, these compounds? So the Clovis has adopted a very aggressive strategy uh, seeking registration. Um, they have a, 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 a array of trials which are called TIGER, which I can't quite remember what it stands for, but it's a nice aggressive and, uh, acronym. So TIGER X was the phase one study, which we've seen some data and we'll see updates at ASCO 2014. TIGER 1 is a first line study with a very aggressive agenda to actually go head to head against Alotinib in the first line TKI naive setting. Wow, that's quite impressive. Uh, so uh, f looking for an actual PFS advantage or yeah. response rate? Yeah. Advantage. Their registration yeah. strategy will yeah. almost certainly be mm -hmm. looking for a single arm post-alotinib, um, you know, accelerated approval. Uh, Alice, a couple of